So what is regenerative soil microscopy? Regenerative soil microscopy, RSM for short, is a holistic approach to microscope-based assessment and evaluation of soil, compost, microbes, mycorrhiza, biofertilizers, and plant roots and plant leaves. It can also be easily applied and adapted to broader mycology and other fields, whether you're brewing biofertilizers commercially or you're working with a specific cultivar in a aquaponic setting, uh, all of these things will apply. Regenerative soil microscopy is a combination of accepted and adapted microscope methodologies and techniques. I brought them together to streamline the process to make it easier, to make it cleaner and clearer so that we can take more informed and confident action and get the results that we want faster. And so when we do that, we, we speed up time, we save time, and we arrive at all of our goals sooner. And so, and then, then at the same time, this all fits regenerative soil microscopy into a larger constellation of testing. So the microscopy work is done, but it's all in interpretation, it's in tandem with other tests. Like I can't, I, I can't even imagine not doing a pH test, not doing a nitrogen test, those types of things because they ground us and root us in a way that is fundamental, so critically important. And you know, my students who are regenerative soil students know exactly what I mean. And so we need the microscopy for the context, for what's happening, for what we can see. But then when we do all those more abstract tests, it informs that space. And I know these, these are sometimes generalizations and, and, and whatnot, but they, they, you'll see, <laughs> you'll see how functional they are. They're incredibly functional because um, they're testing for certain things. And when we understand the test, the limitations of the test, we can use them very strategically, very uh, tactically, and we can solve problems in real time. So, all right, regenerative soil microscopy in a nutshell. Now this first bit, this is just for soil, compost, IMOs, teas, extracts, and biofertilizer analysis and evaluation. So number one, we have the initial analysis and characterization of the bacteria, fungi, protozoa, nematodes, microarthropods, soil minerals, and humic compounds. You would write this down, you'd be taking notes, you'd be taking pictures and videos, you'd be counting these things in, in, in per drop and looking at the ratios present. And then number two, hemocytometer bacteria counting and viability staining with, with a new stain that we'll talk about and epifluorescence. And it, it's, it's a new old stain. It's a stain that was outside the bounds of what we could use with eyepieces, but I don't use eyepieces. I use a screen and I can toggle the brightness on there and even if it's super bright, it just washes it out. It doesn't hurt my eyes like it would over here. So it's a new day, new things, and, and this seems like common sense, but it's not common practice. So that has to happen. You know, as my mentor always says, common sense is not always common practice. So um, we, ha we, have to, we have to put these things into practice. And the hemocytometer is a grid slide that's standardized across all sciences that use the microscope. So they're using it in biology, they're using it in lab-based science, using it in virology. I mean, this is the standard and the math is the same regardless of what the context is. It's accepted through labs all over the world regardless of the language you speak. It's math, it's simple, it's clean, it's clear, and it's irrefutable, <laughs> okay? <laughs> That's why it's so awesome so that you can we can have that conversation with a surety. It's math that's been proven out and it's a frame of reference. And that frame of reference allows us to be for it to be more useful than the prior method where we're scaling up and leaning upon that number per gram, per milligram, per milliliter, leaning upon it per acre. You can't do that as we've talked about but you'll see it more and more as we go. And you'll see the power in this other modality, this other way of interacting and viewing all these components. Number three, analysis and characterization of nutrient cycling. 
So we're, we're trying to figure out where the nutrients growing, what nutrients are there, um, what's being cycled, what's not being cycled. And so the microbes that are present tell us what foods are present. And if you have a lockout, if those certain microbes, nematodes and protozoas aren't there, you know that the nutrients are being trapped in the bacteria and in the fungi. And so, and, and yes, I know that they release things to plants. That's true. But in the general cycling of nutrients and the formation uh, and release of nitrogen and organic uh, and carbonaceous materials into the soil environment, it vastly increased with those other, those other two parts of the, the, the trophic cycling. So we can map these things out very quickly and easily. And then number four, any additional test methods NPK testing, salinity, pH, those are all very common and easy to get. I mean, even the shake test, the color-based ones, some of the most sophisticated tests we have are color-based. I know it seems very simple, but seeing is believing and every nutrient, every compound, every mineral has a certain color associated with it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do polarization and tell you what minerals are in your soil or in rock. So um, very, very critical. Don't downplay the power of these things. It might be slightly off, but it's not that far off. So so those those Lamont ki test kits, they're excellent. That's what I recommend using. They're, they're not too expensive. And you can get a salinity, salinity test um, a meter. Uh, it, all this stuff's very, very easy and affordable. And once you add that in, you have so much power. You're like, oh my gosh, this is so high in phosphorus. That's the thing you don't add when you're doing your mycorrhizal inoculant. And that should be basic common sense. When was the last time you met someone doing phosphorus testing on their compost? Because the, as you'll see in the book, the compost I'm testing, you know, all the hot compost is pH eight or lockout central. And then has all the members, has all the components, but <sighs> It, you know what I mean? It's it's usually like super high in nitrates. So that's vegetative growth only. You don't want to be adding that when things are fruiting. So understanding what the the predilections of each type of compost is and the feedstock and the way things are managed and the results we get is entirely dependent on those additional test methods being rolled in to the context, the background understanding so that we can interpret what we're seeing with more accuracy and number six uh, number five soil and compost rubric and evaluation so you you go and you gather all that information and then you look at other examples the rubric and start evaluating you start writing down your observations you start thinking about these those actions you really come to a decision you know what i mean what is the state of my soil what is the state of the compost and then number six, you're going to develop a holistic soil management plan using actions and recipes that are found in regenerative soil. And all these things do dovetail together. This course is part two of a trilogy, the Regenerative Soil Trilogy. The Regenerative Soil book is an ebook in the opening part of this course. So that's yours to download. And you can, if you haven't read it before, holy cow, oh my gosh. Check that out, because that's gonna that that's the the fundamental touchstone for everything we're doing in here. All the interpretation I do, all the the questions that I ask that led me to do the testing that I did is in there. So um, reading that, I highly advise you know crash course reading that you know as fast as possible, uh, so that you have a lot more grounding because we're going to be using that throughout. What if you could verify if your compost was actually doing its job? What if you could verify if the inoculants, the mycorrhizal inoculants, the biofertilizers are actually worth the money spending on them? It is all possible. And it's all things you can learn in the Regenerative Soil Microscopy 20 week online course that is starting this fall. If you wanna learn how to not just understand your soil, but to see that the things you're doing are actually working, that the money that you're gonna spend or, or have spent was worth it. 
so you don't get fooled again. This is the pathway. We need holistic testing, we need holistic microscopy, and we need to combine them in a new methodology for genitive soil microscopy. I hope you join us. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. I'll see you soon.